growing weary of running from room to room, practicing one-tooth insurance-driven dentistry? Then stay tuned for the latest episode of The Lionhearted, where Dr. Steven Rasner will hand you the blueprint for what many call the gold standard of general practice dentistry. Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Steve Rasner. You are tuned in again to The Lionhearted Dentist Podcast, the podcast for dentists that don't want to give up that still believe in the dream, and that dream is independent dentistry, whether you're a solo practice or a small partnership. What it's not is selling out to corporate dentistry, not having control of your practice and your philosophy and your beliefs, whether that be what labs you can use or what type of supplies and instrumentation you use. Man, I don't know how you would choose the other way. I think if you have, to me, you might have given up. And I don't include those of you that just get out of school. If I haven't made this clear before, I'm going to make it clear now. And that is that when you get out of school, think about if you were a physician. If you were a physician, you know what happens to them. They got to do all kinds of levels of training after they get out of medical school. And we all know the stories about at some level, they're going to do 80 to 100 hours a week. We all know colleagues that end up doing that in medicine. So why would it be so peculiar to you or me that when you get out of dental school, you got to pay some dues? And at least when you're paying your dues, you're getting paid and could earn at least what I would say is reasonable compensation. Man, I'm glad we're having this conversation. I just got out of work an hour ago and sometimes I go different directions of what I want to talk about and I wasn't planning this direction. I'm not. This is not what the podcast is about. But I'm just saying to you, Those of you that are out there that listen that are young, and I know there's many of you, some of you are still in dental school, and many of you are out less than five years. You got to do whatever you have to do to hone your skills and put yourself out there that you're in the community. And what I mean by that is if you open up a practice, you may have to work two nights a week and Fridays and maybe even Saturdays. I did all that. How else would the community know that you even exist? You got to pay dues. Those dues aren't as bad as our colleagues coming out of med school. So what's the big deal? The career, you have plenty of time to dedicate those years to bigger incomes with bigger savings and all that. Don't punish yourself or beat yourself up. Because A, you're working at a bunch of associateships. My father was a dentist. And I worked for him. And I also worked for two other offices in the beginning. Because I wasn't sure if I wanted to end up in South Jersey, by the way. Which is where I ended up. I never left. That, and also, if you opened up your own deal. And I'm on your team, man. You need to know that you can write to me. I called one of our colleagues back tonight on the way home from work that wrote to me for the very first time this morning. And by the way, you may want to thank him if you like this podcast. You know, it's weird doing a podcast, and I know normal podcasters don't talk like this because you don't know who's listening or who you're really connecting with. And then I'll get two or three emails, and you know, somebody will tell me that they really like this style. The truth is this, guys. I do these at this stage because I, I've lectured for 20 plus years. And I don't know. I just discovered this medium of getting my message out there for you. Anyway, enough of that. So let me talk about tonight's subject. And I know over the last several podcasts, I've been talking about Well, how do you really put this whole thing together that ends up with 
a multi-million dollar per year solo practice. I mean, how do you really do it? And I just think I need to come at you from a lot of different angles. And the angle tonight is going to be talking about another spoke in this wheel. So let me explain this to you. I want you to hold on and understand that this could be you. You need to believe it because, I mean, think about it. I wasn't ranked very high in my class. I don't know how much, how important that means to what real level of dentist that you are. But none of us are that great when we get out of school. Even a number one guy is not amazing, probably, when he gets out of school. And add that to the fact, I went to this area of the United States, which happened to be where, where I'm from, that was already in a nosedive economically. So you add that. I didn't sound like I went to this amazing, thriving area. And my father's practice was good. It wasn't certainly not even close to being the biggest, most thriving practice in that town even. And that same start, and believe me, if you knew my story, there were many other setbacks, devastating ones. And you flash forward to 39 years later. And to be honest with you, it's pretty much on most of the time on automatic pilot and has been for many years. So when I shared with you on other podcasts the gross revenues that we achieve each year, that's just a function of all these spokes in the wheel that I keep giving you. I don't have to do anything different. I mean, I shouldn't say that. Sometimes I have to tune up one of the spokes in the wheel and that wheel results in a huge number per year according to industry standards, according to many of you. And think about it for a minute. I didn't do it because I've got a satellite team of seven offices. I do it out of a very manageable situation that many of you could achieve. In fact, we did four million out of one office for several years. And the only reason I expanded to a second office was because that office just got old to me. And I could afford to expand, even if it didn't bring me amazing new revenues. That's not why I did it. I'm sure many of you can relate to this. Every square inch of my original office was taken. I couldn't do another thing. I couldn't add a CT scan there if I wanted to without taking out one of the operatories. And I'm sure many of you right now may be in a similar situation. Maybe you opened up an office, I don't know, five years ago that had two ops. I didn't have two ops. I had five ops. And I would tell you this, if you're busting at the seams, you know what? I'm not going to tell you anything. What you need to do, and I am not the Wizard of Oz. I don't have the answers to everything, but I'll give you my honest opinion. I talked to a gentleman tonight from New York City, and he asked me about the magazine that you hear me refer to sometimes that has been very influential in this past 12 months with me in getting new patients. And when he told me his whole story, I didn't think it was a good idea for him. Because, you know, he's been practicing as long as I have. And he's in a very different, specific area. Not all New York, but where he is, I'm not sure. Man, I don't want that on my watch. You know, I don't want to tell you guys to go spend X amount of dollars unless I am tremendously convinced, given everything you tell me about yourself and your practice and your present place in the industry and in, in your career. I need to hear all that before I'll give you an endorsement of a certain product that I've used successfully. Now, if you're in a rural, a rural area, like I'm in a rural area, I am more free to tell you 
about things I think would work and I've used. Uh, and be, I'd be more willing to say, yeah, go give that a shot. So the same thing with whatever you're doing. Is it time for you to expand? I can't make a general statement like that. You'd have to write to me and we'd talk. And it depends what time of year, what time of the month you get me. Sometimes I can get right back to you in the first day. And sometimes it takes me weeks. And again, it's just one guy's opinion. But back to where we're at today. So it's these spokes in the wheel. And I really found that interesting to say to you, it's not like I go in to January 1st, 2020 and say, all right, here are the new goals to get us to this position so we can maintain what we did last year. I don't say that. I pretty much continue what I've been doing for years because it works. And sometimes I have to reinforce a spoke. And these spokes, in case you're wondering, are your clinical set is absolutely a spoke. If you're out there and you're struggling and wherever you're at in your career and your scope of services is limited. See, the thing is this. There are two types of young dentists out there and older dentists out there. And if you just bought a practice in the last two years, that's a very different situation than I have. You know why? Because I don't have as much potential work coming out of hygiene because I've been restoring so many people for so many years. And if I do have a lot of work coming out of hygiene that I restored in the last five, seven years, it's probably going to be done over for free. Okay? Depends on the patient's attendance in my practice. So I do want to say this before I move on to the other spokes. And the other spokes are going to be, and this isn't all of them, your clinical skill is one of your spokes. Your team, your marketing is a very big spoke. Today, when I thought about the podcast, I pictured this really beautiful wheel on a car that is probably a very expensive car. And the final product of that wheel looked just stunning. I mean, so much so that everybody notices that beautiful wheel. But that wheel is made up of a multifaceted layer of spokes, is it, does it not? And that's the same thing, I believe, about this model that I'm trying to get a lot of you to consider or emulate. And as I said earlier in this, you know, one of them is clinical skills. And even the gentleman that I alluded to earlier in this podcast, I think what he needed to do was expand his clinical skill based on everything he told me. And he was, a, he was 60, by the way. And I still think that. You know, you're only going to get so far and only have such a final product if you're only willing to do basic restorative dentistry. And we've talked about this on many levels. And that, by the way, that also would lead to what I would think would be a high propensity for burnout if you're only doing limited procedures. Okay. I've been in this now 39 years. And tomorrow after work, I'm taking a three-day course, yet another three-day course in another facet of implant dentistry. And so, obviously, clinical skill is a major part of what is now very often automatic pilot for me. I mean it. If I keep doing all the things I've been doing, it leads to this end result that's considerable, according to many. And your team we've talked about just recently. One thing I do want to say about your team before I go to another way of looking at marketing for all of you is this. And that is when you hire people, this is just an aside. This is the essence of what I mean when I tell you, I want you to consider these podcasts like you and I are having a beer after work 
and we're just shooting the you-know-what and about everything about our practice. And I say to you, let me just give you one minuscule of advice for the rest of your career. If there's a way for you to analyze the candidates that you're considering to hire, try hiring people that you think need to work. It is a very, very big difference in their attendance and willingness to take on ownership in the practice. And you understand me? People that don't need to work call out to take their aunt to the airport or know that they're leaving for vacation tomorrow, but they get off today to prepare for the vacation. Are you feeling me? Because this is spot on. People that need to work, work right up to the time to give themselves a little bit of leeway to get to the airport on time. And I'll just say to you, you are better off with a team of people that need to work. Because when people call out, Everybody's job just got harder. And the performance of the office probably will suffer a hair. I think that's just real. I know I'm diverging, but I want you to stay. I want you to stay in focus. I can't stay in focus, but I want you to. See, I want you to understand how this is how it ends up with those numbers. Because I have all these systems in place that I've worked on for years. And sometimes they break down, particularly marketing, which I'll spend the final minutes on tonight. But they are all important. And if you think of it that way, then it all makes sense, right? If I go in and the spoke of my team starts to break down, and by the way, I'm just thinking of this now, it did break down just yesterday. So even after 39 years of this, I'm not too big and successful for me to pay enough attention to one of my employees that I noticed front desk employee just been coming in late, little by little. And this person's been with me for a while, not for 10 years, under five. But just lately I've noticed it went from quarter of the hour over, I'm saying over the last year, to five minutes before the hour. I'm not kidding either. To 10 minutes after the hour. And I didn't say anything right away. I didn't. I just let it kind of go. And I, I just know how it made me look. I let it go for about about a month. And I called the person out. And by the way, this is probably one of those people that doesn't have to work. So I did. And I, and I love this particular employee. employee. I, I value their contribution to my office. I do. They're really great with people. They don't come in with moods generally. I'd say 95% of the time. As, a, as an example, my Michelle that you hear me allude to. She comes in with a bad mood 0% of the time over 39 years. Zero. It's unbelievable. I'm not zero. She is. But I called this person out. I said, look, you know I love you, but I can't have it like this. It's not going to work. It sends a bad message and you need to react to it. And I was waiting for her reaction. I didn't know if she would leave. I don't know if she was going to break some bad news to me. Don't you love that? Do you not love when your staff members say, I need to talk to you? I can't think of one time an employee has asked me if they could speak to me at some time, and it actually led to something I could feel warm and fuzzy about. And I thought this might happen during this particular conversation, but it didn't. It was ended very nicely and proactively. So, 
now that I'm in the last minutes of my podcast and I told you I would talk about and reinforce the, the spoke in the wheel that we would call marketing, and I have a whole podcast on this, I would like to tell you briefly some basic do's and don'ts. But I think it's important because, listen, if you are been in practice for a long time, that would be over 10 years. And even if you're not, because you've got to walk cautiously, as I didn't finish my thought earlier in this podcast, if you're starting out in a new practice, you can't go gangbusters on everybody you, you meet for the first time. If they have a problem, it's beautiful. And that's really how you have to look at it. We got to spend a whole podcast on that. Maybe the next one. Like, what do you do in those first couple years? You better believe it's a make or break for you. So I will do that. So even if you're in an early practice of growth, you have to have an effective program for attracting new patients. And that really is geographically dependent. You simply, in a major city, cannot afford to get the return on investment that I get being on the air five times a week, excuse me, five times a day, sponsoring the weather. I mean, it cost me $811 per month, five days a week, five times a day. I spent 22000 with ESPN to be on twice a day and got no patients out of it in the, in the uh, city of Philadelphia. So it does matter. Let me just go with, with the rural area because that's easier. Rural areas, I would research absolutely all the radio stations within a hour or 30 to 45 minute hour radius from where you practice. I would even consider AM stations. I would, especially if they're talk shows. I would consider an on the air 30 minute talk show that you pay for. It doesn't sound like you're paying for it on the radio. I had one for seven years called the truth about teeth. You understand what I'm saying to you. This giant wheel of a practice I have that's always spinning off patience and work to me to do came from a lot of different venues. One of the venues was my radio show that went on for seven years. I can't tonight tell you how many patients I still have because I haven't had that program for over 10 years. But it was a part of my practice, part, big part of my success for years. Hard copy media. For me, that means, and I would do this in a city if it was me, that means free newspapers or the free periodicals that smaller communities within a city have, I would do that. And certainly rural areas have that as well, all over that. And I'm in actually two or three different hard copy newspapers that people pick up at the grocery store or other places. And in the area that I'm in, I can afford to be in a newspaper. And by the way, before I forget, you can email me. You know my email. It's my name, Dr. Dr. Rasner at AOL.com. I'll send you the copies of some of the ads I've run over the years. And if you really want to get ambitious and buy one of my books online, called The Extraordinary Practice, there's pages and pages of real life copies of, of the best ads I ever ran. Because for years, that's all I did. And then of course, there's social media. And what do I think about that in 2020? And obviously, it's incredibly important. Let me do this. Let me dedicate the next podcast next week to extrapolating on two things. What I'm talking about right now, I'll review exactly what marketing I think you should do depending on where you're at, where you're located. And I'll also discuss how the younger dentist should approach the patients and the practice that he's purchased. Anyway, don't write me any hate mail. I know I went off on a few tangents this week. I'm just trying to help. I appreciate you. 
Thanks for those of you that write to me, and I'll see you next week on The Lionhearted.